Sometimes in FM you are expected to win a game, but for some reason you are not. And no matter what you try, it doesn't seem to be making any difference. Well, today we've got one of those games, and we're going to look at how we kept plugging away, how we kept making changes, the thought process behind it, and how we eventually managed to get the result that we were supposed to get. Let's go and kick some balls. Hello and welcome back to FM with Old Man Phil. And if you are a brand new visitor, I'm Phil and welcome to the channel. And today we're going to look at a particular kind of problem that happens quite often in FM. A team you should be winning against, but you just can't seem to get that winning goal. And I am no stranger to this either. And we're going to be watching a game that we played against Londrina. Londrina are quite a difficult side for us to beat, have become a little bit of a bogey team. And in this competition, the Paranense Cup, which is a pre-season cup played amongst all the clubs in the state, it's a competition that we are expected to get to the final. Although the expectation is just to get to the final, I expect the team to win it. But Londrina have become a little bit of a bogey team and we always struggle to beat them. And I'm not quite sure why that is. Although, as we'll see later, they're not that much inferior to us in terms of the overall attributes of the players. Now, you might be thinking, why am I doing this series focusing on clubs like Coritiba, who seem to be a very good club and have very good players. Well, that is not the case. So when you see the results in a few moments time, you're going to see that we have a 100% record in our games, but that does not represent the quality of the players. We don't have the best players. And in fact, that's backed up by the fact that one of my best players has just come to me and he has just told me that he wants to leave the club because he wants to go and play with better players. So if he doesn't think we have very good players, who am I to argue with him? But what we do have at this club is a number of young players. Young players with a lot of potential and players that I believe in. And that's why I haven't gone too deep into the transfer market this window. I want to try and develop these young players and I really do believe they could become great players and we could have a great team within two or three seasons. And that makes my job actually doubly harder because as they are young players, they need a lot of guidance. And that guidance is also extended into the times when they are on the pitch. And so I spend my time not also looking at the team instructions and the way that the team is playing as a whole, but also I'm looking at how I can help the younger players who are perhaps making mistakes stop making those mistakes. So not only am I tweaking the team instructions overall, I'm also going to have to be looking at the players and tweaking tweaking their individual instructions during a game as well. So when you look at the results, don't be fooled into thinking this is a good team. We are only expected to finish in mid-table in the league and we're not expected to win any of the trophies. And so in terms of match preparation, I can see that they are going to be quite solid at the back. They're playing two DMs, basically, two ball winners at the back in front of a back four, which has a couple of wing backs on support. So they're going to be quite hard to break down. They don't pose much of an attacking threat in terms of creative players, but they are going to sit back, wait for us to come forward and then come charging out in a very direct style. The comparison charts between the two teams make it look like these are two quite similar teams in terms of the personnel in the squads. And it does look to me like they are extremely similar in terms of attribute values. And the team report doesn't really give me any additional information, apart from the fact that they have problems on the defensive right-hand side and their personnel there probably do need to be improved in terms of the squad. And so using all this knowledge, I came up with a game plan, which was really just to play as we would normally play. But I have made a couple of tweaks, as we shall see in a moment. And so we have selected a team that we think can win this game. And then we have made a couple of tweaks to the way that we are going to play. First off, we are going to focus play down the left because we do know, as I said, that they have a problem on the right-hand side of their defence. And then secondly, because we have a great deal more pace up front than they have in defence, I'm going to ask our boys to pass the ball into space and to see if we can't get our forwards behind them. And I'm including these because sometimes the decisions that you make don't work. And these are two examples of decisions that I made before the game started that actually didn't work. 
So now let's get off to the dressing room and let's get off to the game. And let's see how we figured out how to beat our opponents in this match. And so in the dressing room, I've told them that I want them to pick up where they left off last time. It was a very, very good victory and I want more of the same from them. If we win this game today, then we will win the group phase of this competition. I don't want to come second. I want to come first. And if we lose, there is a possibility that we will come second. If we draw, we will probably remain top of the group. And at the moment, there is going to be a problem coming up very soon. But at the moment, we seem in control of the game. Everything is looking good. We have a free kick here. Maxi Alves runs inside. He looks inside, finds Galzara. And Galzara, with the help of a wicked deflection of the defender, has made it 1-0. It seems like the absolutely perfect start. I am looking at this pitch while we score this goal and I'm thinking this looks like an extremely long pitch that we are playing on today and so that's something in the back of my head that I want to keep an eye on and just just keep an eye on it for the moment that's all it does look like it is extremely large from penalty box to penalty box so I am just focused on that they are playing the ball out from the back they are going to obviously launch direct counter-attacks but they will be prepared it looks like to play out from the back we are counter press, we are pressing them back, trying to press them back, which seems to be working, and I want to try and force them along. I think my high defensive line will have enough to contain them, and I think we will uh, be able to stop them getting balls over the top. We have enough pace at the back. At the moment, I'm just having a look, quick look at what, who is um, playing particularly well for us or for the opposition, and there's nothing really after seven minutes to pick up on in terms of the iPad there. And I stop the game here for a minute because at this point, what I was thinking about in terms of the pitch being extremely long, when we headed the ball down there, there seems like an awful lot of space there in midfield, and Galazaro had to come back a long way to retrieve that ball. And so I have little concerns about where my defensive line is in relation to my midfield. And I'm starting to think that I need to compress the midfield spaces in order to make sure that we pick up these loose second balls. But I'm not going to do it immediately. I'm going to keep an eye on it. And if there are issues that I can see later, then I will probably do something about it. At the moment we are winning the game <laughs> and we're getting some shots on but we're, we're not particularly good with those shots but at least we are controlling the game and um, it, again we're coming forward at speed and there's another long shot and that might be something to do with the length of the pitch it might be to do with something else but we do seem to be missing our shots, missing our uh, attempts. And when at the moment we've had four attempts and only one of them has been on target. And that wasn't the goal because that was an own goal. So it's not, although we're looking like we are in control at the moment and I can't see anybody who's causing any problems. I can't see anything that's a problem for me, but I do decide to act on what I saw earlier and I'm gonna push the line much higher up to compress the space in between our midfield and attackers so that the chances of picking up that second ball in midfield are greatly increased. And again, we can see them passing the ball around. And at this point, I'm going to also try and push more men up the field. And I'm going to put my Segunda Volante onto an attack duty. I think that I'm thinking that maybe our shots are off target because we're not getting enough bodies forward. At that point, my defender makes an absolutely dreadful error you can't legislate for that it just is one of those things they get a corner here and things are looking pretty dangerous here they have an opportunity and they equalize that goal came from a dreadful defensive error I'm not even quite sure now who made that error but what a dreadful piece of play we gave the set piece away and they took advantage of the pet set piece and they scored. And so now it's 1-1. But at the moment, I'm not panicking. I think that we're doing well enough to win this game. I think we're controlling it. I think we're passing the ball around nicely. They had their spell in the game and they scored. I think we're going to dominate this game and probably be two or three up by half time. And we just, I think we just need to keep doing what we're doing. We need to just 
keep pressing them, keep passing the ball around and just be very wary of their counter-attacks. We can see that they are counter-attacking, trying to get balls over the top. We've caught them offside, but it's something I need to always consider. My wing back on the left I'm just going to put him on a support duty for a moment because the match momentum has shifted and I want to be much more defensively solid and at this point I've realised there's no point in focusing play down the left I thought it might be a good idea it didn't work so we've taken that off and again we are controlling the game on the field passing it around we look good passing it around passing it at pace looking for space but they are defending deep and we can see they have five or six across Across the back line and they are managing to snuff out any attacks that we are having at 30 minutes I'm not really that bothered at the moment as I'm still pretty confident that we're going to get a goal before half time but what is worrying is that they are defending so well that we've only still had four opportunities we can see another counter-attack where they've got men behind our line but our defense is good enough i think to cover those direct runs another corner is cleared william does a good job in goal we're doing okay but we're holding on more than anything and i want to try now to be a little bit more positive in our approach so i've just gone to a positive mentality to see if pushing bodies forward will help. But I am aware that every time I make an attacking adjustment, it means their counter-attack could become more powerful. And once again, one of our forwards fails to get the ball in the back of the net. I'm now having a quick peruse around the iPad, and I really can't see anything from what I'm seeing that is suggesting that we are playing badly or any individual is playing badly. The bottom line is, for some reason, we are not getting shots on target, and there's another one. The fact that we are not getting shots on target means there is something wrong. And so now at the moment, I'm trying to figure out what is wrong. And if I don't solve this, this will go on throughout the second half. I need to try and solve what is going on. At the moment, I'm, I've only got two options open to me. It might be, it's not that we're not getting bodies forward, but it also might be the fact that players are just not having good games. And in particular, my two shadow strikers are not playing particularly well. Now, that could be because their roles are wrong. Perhaps I'm not helping them enough to actually do what they're supposed to. It could also be that the pace that we are playing the game means that they are just snatching at their opportunities and they're not composed enough to be putting them away. So I still have two options. One would be to take the players off and try somebody else. And then at some point in the second half, we may be able to just lower the tempo of the game a little bit and see if that helps in terms of our strikes on goal. And so at half time, I was struggling to think about what to say, but I just told them in the end our shooting was not good enough. And I wanted to get extra bodies forward to try and help them. So I decided to put my right wing back on attack. That was the wrong decision that I had made, which I will alter very soon in the second half. And I, I don't know what's going on, why we can't score goals, but I'm leaning towards those two things that I thought about before half time and it's at this point I realised that it's my, my wing backs are wrong I can see they're attacking down the left hand side so I want my left wing back on attack and not my right wing back so I swap those instructions over just to deal with that problem I've caused myself and the game just goes on and it goes on pretty much in the same fashion what I don't want to do is panic they are going to launch counter attacks and we've seen those counter attacks and I don't want to give the game away at this point I've realised that part into space I've just seen it's not working and so we're going to take that off two experiments that I tried that actually didn't work I am looking at the average ratings for the match ratings for the two shadow strikers one is 6.6 .6, one is 6.5 not poor games but not great games either they're capable of a lot better so at the moment rather than reducing the tempo because this tempo is what we've been playing all the time. And also I just noticed there that they don't like a rough tackle. My assistant had said to try it before the game and I ignored him. So I decided to get stuck in. And as I was saying, I don't want to reduce the tempo at this point because they've been playing really well on the tempo that we have set for them. And again, we get ourselves a shadow striker in position, lovely position, and he's just wildly firing it wide. And Kamalo also not having the greatest of games. 
games for some reason. We are still continuing to threat. They are not looking like a threat, but we still can't get that second goal. And at some point, I've got to make a decision what to do. But just at this point, we do find ourselves in space. Pires from la from right wing back comes inside, drills a shot into the corner, and now we've gone two one up. And whilst I might be celebrating now, I'm not sure it's game over because they are desperately good on the counter attack and have caused us a number of problems. So it's definitely not game over. I still need to figure out why. We are not scoring goals and it's taken a wing back to come and score the second goal, which puts us ahead. At this point, I'm going to probably just make a few substitutions. I've taken off the two shadow strikers and I've replaced them with players who are perfectly capable of having good games for us up there, Praxides and Moreno. And so we're going to try to just see if different personnel actually make the difference. If this doesn't work, then by the time we get to the last 10 or 15 minutes, I th what I'm thinking is we just close out the game. But I really don't understand why we're not getting our shots on target. I'm going through our statistics to see what is happening. I can't see anything that might be causing us a problem. Our heat map is good. Our positioning on the field is good. Everything looks good. And I am trying to think here of what to, decisions to make. I decide to come off the counter press and to trigger press more often. The reason for doing that is when we are counter pressing, we do seem to be running around like headless chickens and the opposition are, have been able to play out from the back at leisure. And so I'm thinking that actually the counter press isn't actually serving us with any value so we'll come off that but I, I do feel that the trigger press is working very well and, and creating problems for them so that's why I went and upped the trigger press and things are going still pretty much the same but we're still ahead and at this point I make a, an odd decision to put my sweeper keeper on support I am aware of the fact that we are playing with a very high line with big spaces behind us and I just made that decision and there you go Paraxides, who came on as a substitute, wallops one into the back of the net. And suddenly now I'm thinking, that's all it was. It was the wrong shadow strikers in the wrong game. Sometimes it's not as simple as that. Sometimes it is something that you're doing on the pitch. This time it seems to be something to do with the fact that we had the wrong personnel on the pitch. So now at 3-1, what's in my mind is we need to start closing the game down. And I usually do close the game down in stages. I don't make all the instructions at once. We're just going to close the game down slowly and just keep, keep the scoreline as it is now. Even if we concede one now, then we're going to win the game. If we can, we're not, what I don't want to do is to concede two. But we're still controlling things now. The change of personnel seems to have done the trick and I'm much, much happier as a manager. Sometimes it is that simple and I had to figure that out though and I had to keep trying and we're still coming forward and we're still creating chances. I'm going to make another couple of changes now just to rest players, get fresh legs on the pitch. We've got the game won now in my mind and as long as we don't concede in the next 10 minutes, we're going to be absolutely fine. They are still playing in the same way and I'm beginning now to shut the game down. I've taken my Segundo Volante off attack and put him back on support. Part of becoming more defensive as we go through the final 15 minutes. Then they make a dreadful error at the back and one of my other substitutes up top He's available there. He picks up the loose ball and pops it in. A dreadful mistake that they made, possibly from the pressure that he had come on and put them under. And suddenly we are streets ahead now. And it's really seemed to me that just changing the personnel at that point was responsible for us getting out of that trouble and getting the goals in the second half. I think now I'm much more relaxed and I can really start to enjoy the game. I'm just checking things. I will always check things, scan things just to make sure 
that nothing is amiss and we are definitely the stronger team now. We are looking very, very dangerous. We have hurt them now and it's game over. And now all I need to do is to close the game down. So I'm going to lower the tempo. I'm going to start time wasting. And there probably needs to be one or two other changes later. But for now, that's enough. And we're really peppering their goal now. They are totally out of sorts. I'm sitting back here smiling, knowing and that's another good job done. And had I not kept trying, had I not made the correct substitutions at that time this game might have been ended in a draw and we might even have lost it i'm now going to lower the line a little bit because i know they're going to come at us a little bit in the last few minutes i'm going to come off the counter attack there's no need to do it now i'm going to play in a narrow shape to become more compact and time waste there's just five minutes left and pretty much now i'm just going to close the game down one more change i'm going to come off the trigger press a little bit to save some energy and we're just going to see the game out now and just control possession keep hold of the ball don't do anything silly and the game is ours and so we're just seeing out the game. And sometimes in these games that you can't seem to win, be patient, keep looking. There's something that's not quite right. If you've tried everything, then it's going to be come down to either personnel or whatever's left or whatever it is. There's going to be something that will make the difference. And if you keep vigilant, if you keep looking, keep probing, keep trying things, then eventually you're going to find what it is. And that's why we're getting this success is because at the moment, eventually we are finding what it is. I'm going to hold my shape now. I want to keep the score at 4-1. I'm perfectly happy. And I'm also going to put my wing backs on defend. I'm going to make their life very difficult now. And they are going to have to do a lot of work to try and break us down now. And as much as they try, I don't think they're going to be able to. We're very, very competent at the back. We've played well we've worked hard at the back and we're going to close this game down easily now and as we go into time added on i know i've done a really good job here i've watched the game as a manager and not as a spectator i've tried things and it worked be aware though it is not always going to work and sometimes you don't figure it out but there are always clues <laughs> there is usually a way to win the match that you're playing in so you will come across this kind of problem a lot in FM. You'll come across it five or six times or even more during a season, how to break teams down. And it's not always easy and straightforward. We had to work quite hard in order to break them down then. But what you have to do is keep thinking, keep scanning the data, keep looking at the positions, keep looking at who is my most dangerous player and how can I get the ball to him? If that's not an option, keep looking at your lines. Are my lines in the right place? Am I getting enough bodies forward? Keep trying things. Sometimes they are not going to work and often they are not going to work, but always keep trying. And eventually, eight times out of ten, you are going to unlock the defence. But you will notice that never at any time did I panic. I never just went into attacking or very attacking mode to try and get that goal. There was plenty of time in the game left to try and solve it in another way. Had I gone attacking or very attacking, I know I'm going to leave big spaces behind me. And with a counter-attacking team who counter at pace, that is probably not the best way to try and win that game. Also, I'm always aware that a draw in this fixture would have been perfectly adequate. And so that's it for this episode of the series. And uh, thank you very much for watching. If you are brand new to the channel and you like FM content, hit that subscribe button, click the bell, and then you'll be updated when we upload future videos in this series. And we are going to be looking at, I think, different types of challenges that you might come up against that you might have to deal with in game. And so that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for coming along. Thanks for watching. Stay safe, take care, and we will see you in the next one.